In this hands-on video, we step through many of the new changes found in iOS 11 Beta 3. One of the best changes to come to iOS 11 Beta 3 has to do with the iPad, specifically force closing apps. You can just swipe up like you used to be able to do in order to force close an app from the app switcher. So no longer do you have to long press and press the little hard to press X button in order to close out applications. And here's a subtle change. The app switcher now features a less blurry background. So if you have an eagle eye there, you'll notice that. And if you do have that eagle eye, then you may notice some of the multitasking animation adjustments that occur on the iPad when entering multitasking mode. So you'll see a slightly tweaked animation as the foreground app zooms out to show all four edges. Now here's my personal favorite feature in Beta 3. It's really just a bug fix, but now you can actually place apps into a folder that is in the dock. Previously, you couldn't do that because of a bug, presumably, but now you can. But I think this is actually gonna be most people's favorites, the ability to view older notifications simply by swiping down and invoking Notification Center. No more swiping up. It's not truly dark mode, but some people use Smart Invert as a dark mode, and it's improved in iOS 11 Beta 3. One such example is within the Music app. You'll now notice that the album artwork is no longer inverted, so that allows you to view the Music app and all the album artwork inside while still enjoying the so-called dark mode. If you felt that the font used for lyrics in the Music app were too large previously, you'll enjoy the updated version with the smaller font and personally, I think the smaller font looks a lot cleaner. You'll also notice slightly updated weather app glyphs. So you can see those right there. And there's also new Siri translations. Listen in. How do you say thank you in French? Merci. How do you say thank you in Italian? Grazie. How do you say thank you in German? Danke. When syncing messages via iCloud, you'll notice a new counter it actually counts down the amount of items you have remaining that need to sync. So six items remaining. And look at that, we're done. Spotlight search has been slightly tweaked to show search results right beneath the search bar, which makes sense, right? I like this change. And Safari View Controller's 3D Touch Preview has been slightly updated. So now it shows just the domain name at the top there when you're peeking in and when you pop in, you'll be able to see more details just like this. You'll notice many new TV providers listed in the TV provider section of the settings app. However, not all of them are fully operational. It could be a sign of things to come. Uh, some of the TV providers that we can expect to gain support for a single sign on in the future. In the meantime, it will use your iCloud keychain data to log into the supported applications that use that particular provider. There's a new OS X server option in the Files app under Locations. I'm gonna go out on the limb and say that that is just a placeholder. It doesn't even work right now, but yeah, that's a placeholder. On the other hand, Dropbox is available in the Files app as well, but this is the old school integration. This is not the newfangled iOS 11 integration, but it does allow you to access your document providers like Dropbox now, right within the Files app. As you probably know, iOS 11 brings about some changes to the way the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth toggles now work. For instance, with Wi-Fi, if you disable the toggle, it doesn't actually disable Wi-Fi outright, it will just disconnect from any connected Wi-Fi networks. So watch what happens here. If I tap the Wi-Fi toggle, you see where it says disconnected from fireworks? It disconnected from the network I was connected to, and you can see that auto join is disabled. So this means that you can disconnect from a currently connected Wi-Fi network, yet still retain all the benefits of keeping Wi-Fi on. And the same premise applies to Bluetooth as well. So I have Bluetooth enabled now, and I'm going to disable the Bluetooth toggle, but you'll notice here in the settings, it doesn't actually disable Bluetooth outright. Now here's something nice to see, the now playing control center widget will actually link to the app that is being played. So in this case, the music app, I tap it, it opens up the music app, just like it used to do. And there are some tint changes to the active toggles in control center. So when I enable low power mode, you can see it has a little orange icon, the flashlight it turns blue, and the timer when enabled 
will turn blue as well. In Beta 3, you can now change the timer or flashlight values without lifting your finger off the screen. So you just tap on the toggle in Control Center and then drag your finger to adjust the value. Instead of needing 3D Touch, you can now simply tap on the Apple TV remote shortcut in Control Center to open up the remote. In the screen recording feature in iOS 11 may have a new name. This is obviously beta, so we don't know exactly where this is going, but now it curiously states, start broadcast. Speaking of screen recording, the banner used to indicate an in-progress recording is now smaller and more low key. In iOS 11 beta 3 brings updated cellular data usage from your carrier. So you can see when it was last updated, you can see your billing cycle end date and more. In iOS 11 Beta 3, you can now use drag and drop in the Messages app. And I can see such a feature being useful for sharing media like stickers, for instance, or even just sharing a conversation with someone else using drag and drop. In our last item on the list, the Health app got a brand new splash screen indicating some of the upcoming features such as Health in the Cloud. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at quite a few features and changes in iOS 11 Beta 3. What's your favorite change and did we miss anything big? Let me know down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.